These people do not exist. They aren't real because they were generated by a computer. If you haven't noticed, AI has been getting really good at creating photorealistic images. You may even have heard about newer programs like Dolly 2 or Imagine that can create incredible images from any prompt written in natural human language. In this video, I want to explore how machines do this and use the latest methods from deep learning to generate my own YouTube thumbnails that do not exist. So let's start with a statement of the problem. We want a program that can generate realistic images, but what does realistic mean exactly? Well, if we're going to solve a problem with deep learning, the first question we have to answer is, what is our data? We need some data set of images. It doesn't matter what kind. It could be people or mountains or cats or dogs or all of the above. A realistic image simply looks like it could belong in that data set, and we want a program to generate these images for us. This is a perfect problem for deep learning. I have no idea how to write an algorithm to do this, but I have plenty of data to describe it. So, if we're going to generate YouTube thumbnails, we need a collection of thumbnails, and a lot of them. Thankfully, for my purposes, there are plenty of public online resources that I use to create my own thumbnail dataset. We're talking cream of the crop stuff here, best of the best. In all, I ended up with around 200,000 thumbnails from generally popular videos and channels. Make no mistake, this dataset is going to be hard to learn. Thumbnails are complicated and contain a wide variety of subjects and styles. Different languages, abstract objects, animations, video games, and, worst of all, human faces. Expressive, extreme faces in weird environments with strange editing. We are very sensitive to mistakes in faces, and our model could end up generating some very uncanny things. Spoiler alert, that is exactly what will happen. But, if you've seen my previous video on neural networks, you will know that the more data you have, the better performance you get. This is part of what makes data so valuable. It is the oil of the 21st century and the fuel of deep learning. So we've got our data, let's talk about algorithms. Ultimately, we want a program or model that pops out a realistic image, but not just one, we want it to produce a diversity of realistic images. This diversity is introduced with randomness. Rather than producing the same image every time, the model can be fed a bunch of random numbers and generate a different image based on that input. Essentially, all deep learning methods rely more or less on this paradigm, random noise in, realistic image out. More technically, this random input is known as a latent variable, as opposed to an observed variable like the output image. We don't care what the latent input is, but the model does and should map different inputs to different images. There are a lot of different methods for doing this, but a classic one is known as a GAN, a Generative Adversarial Network. At a high level, two neural networks are pitted against one another, where one network, the generator, is tasked with generating images, and the other, the discriminator, decides whether a given image is real or generated. The generator is fed random noise and produces an image, while the discriminator is fed an image and outputs a single value between 0 and 1, representing its best guess as to whether the given image is real or fake. We give it both real images from our dataset and fake images made by our generator. The generator is trained to fool the discriminator by creating ever more convincing images of your dataset and the discriminator is trained to become ever more perceptive, learning what real images look like and detecting the mistakes of the generator. They are playing what is called a mini-max game. The discriminator is trying to maximize the probability that it has guessed correctly, while the generator is trying to minimize that same value. It is adversarial. Once we've finished training, the generator is our final model, and we can smoothly and continuously walk through the images that it makes by walking through the random values that we feed the network. This is called GAN interpolation, and every frame of this video should look like a realistic image and was made by our generator. So, I decided to train a GAN on my thumbnail dataset. Because the internet is a better programmer than I'll ever be, I borrowed an open source GAN implementation, fixed it up, and started it off training. The generator started by outputting random images, and the discriminator quickly learned that random noise does not look like YouTube thumbnails, so the generator output more distinct colors and shapes, which the discriminator grew wise to, and the game is on. You can see what the generator is cooking up as it learns, and hopefully these splotchy patterns should eventually start looking more like YouTube thumbnails. 
I love GANs. I think that they are an elegant solution to a complicated problem, and they remind me a lot of how camouflage evolves in the natural world. A prey species might generate ever more convincing disguises for leaves and sticks and thorns, while a perceptive predator evolves to discriminate between true and false prey. This arms race produces intricate and complex imitations, just as it does in GANs. A GAN is like a little co-evolution simulator, and I like evolution simulators. But this analogy can also help explain some inherent problems with GANs. Like populations of predators and prey, the system is a balancing act. A cunning predator can drive a poorly camouflaged species to extinction, and vice versa. The same is true for GANs, as they depend on a stable balance between the generator and the discriminator, and this can be very difficult to achieve. To get a closer look, we can chart the performance of both networks as they learn. They are both striving to make their error measurement, or loss, go down over time. Because they're playing an adversarial game, these values are inversely related. When one dips, the other spikes. Sometimes the loss for both explodes. That's bad, but some gradient clipping should fix that. Now just the generator's loss is exploding? Okay, that one was a bug. Now the generator just kinda sucks? In fact, it looks like it's just generating the same thing over and over, with little variation, and doesn't look very good. This is called mode collapse, and is one of the tricky fail states that GANs can get stuck in, even when loss seems stable. So read up on some stabilization techniques, plug in some fancy things like image noise and label smoothing and spectral normalization, then scale up my networks and train it for 24 hours and... Well, there you go. This was just about the best I could do. Let's interpolate and walk through the sample. Oh my. I mean, you can see what it's going for, right? There's some text, some dim outlines of heads, some diversity of colors, but it's a bit, how do you say, Lovecraftian nightmare? I'm not a big fan. I tried this over and over and over, testing different architectures and hyperparameters and datasets, and just could not get the thing off the ground. At this point, I was getting a bit discouraged. I had invested a month of work into this thing and had nothing to show. If it's not obvious, I am very much an amateur at this. After all, you can get GANs to do incredible things. But, as I was struggling to get it to work, I came across a short blog post where someone had been trying to train a GAN on their dataset and had run into a wall. Finally, they gave up on the GAN and tried a newer method called diffusion. This algorithm, more formally known as the Denoising Diffusion Probabilistic Model, is a relatively new innovation, and is the part of the text-to-image models like Dolly 2 and Imagine that actually generate the images. By itself, diffusion is another way of solving the same problem that GAN solve, image synthesis. It works by first taking an image from your dataset and adding a small amount of random noise to it over and over for a fixed number of steps until the image has turned into pure static. A neural network is then trained to reverse this process, detecting and then removing the noise that was added at each step, gradually reconstructing the original image over the same number of steps. In order to do this, the network must know something about what the image should look like so that it can discern what is noise and what is not. However, the forward noising process cannot be perfectly undone, as information is literally being destroyed, and by the end there really is no way to tell what the original image was but a well-trained model will be able to make educated guesses about what the image may have looked like, turning random noise into a realistic image, which is exactly what we need. So again, I went out and borrowed an open source implementation for diffusion and threw it at my dataset. Almost immediately, there was a noticeable difference. The early images look distinctly more painted, almost like watercolor. These are aesthetically very different from the early GAN images, and to me, are very pretty. Slowly, the general idea of a thumbnail began to form, and then I saw it. A face, clear as day, emerged from the noise. A little goblin man, complete with eyes and ears and a mouth. Already, it's better than the GAN, and we're only a few hours into training. As the model continues to learn, it soaks up patterns from the data like a sponge. More thumbnail features began to emerge. Faces complexified and grew bodies, shapes turned into letters and words, and it even began to memorize logos like Vivo. If we let it keep running for a long time, it should just keep getting better. Diffusion is based on the real, physical process of diffusion, in which a system gradually spreads out and becomes more and more disorganized over time. 
In order to reverse this effect, we have to start with a messy high entropy state and find a path back to an organized low entropy state. In the diffusion algorithm, we are starting with unstructured information and finding a path back to structured information, restoring the original distribution. We know that such a path exists because we took that path when adding noise in the first place. These processes are not just similar, they are, in some ways, exactly the same. Entropy is information. Now, there are a lot of technical details that I'm brushing over here, so I'll link some better explanations if you want to dive deeper. I found both the papers and code for diffusion to be much harder to parse and much more complicated than GANs. Never trust a mathematician who tells you something is simple. But this complexity is there for a reason. It works. After training for a few days, we have a model that can denoise pure static into images that look like thumbnails, extracting meaning from randomness. Once we've generated some samples, we can scale them up to a higher resolution with another neural network. Obviously, these faces are a little funny looking, but I hope you'll agree that compared to the GAN, these results look a lot better. It really is no contest. You may even see some familiar faces here, and you can really feel the YouTuber culture just oozing from some of these. In fact, these wacky faces and made-up words are kind of perfect as YouTube thumbnails since they're really good at grabbing your attention, which is the whole point. The program is imitating our culture, our languages, and our interests, everything that attracts our attention. Some of these definitely still creep me out, but a few of the dramatic faces I think look unironically great. Even some of the really abstract ones can look beautiful, though I can't say exactly what they are. They look like abstract art to me. Now, you may be accusing me of cherry-picking these results, and that is exactly what I'm doing. Ultimately, I have to pick the best ones for the actual thumbnail, but let's take a look at some randomly selected samples that the model generated. A lot of them are just mush, no real subject or form. There are a lot that are just pure black or pure white or completely abstract shapes. While it makes a lot of faces, it only rarely generates other kinds of common subjects like food or cars or landscapes. You can kind of tell that it's trying to make things that look like animations or video games, but they're not that impressive. And yeah, we're still getting some Lovecraftian nightmares here. When it's not making up words, it can have trouble spelling simple phrases, like the famous Khan Academy. Some results look suspiciously good, I'd say too good. These happen when a particular pattern is copy-pasted in thousands of thumbnails, and the model learns really well to copy it pixel for pixel. I might call this overfitting. The model is too good at imitating the original dataset, and is just memorizing images. We want novel images, ones that look like the dataset, but are not in the dataset. So how would I improve these results? Well, the promise of deep learning is more data and bigger models means better performance. I've just about maxed out model size, but I can always use more data. If we want the model to be better at generating all the funky things that thumbnails can be, we need to give it more examples. We need more fuel. A larger dataset with more diversity would also make it harder for the model to exactly memorize specific faces, words, and logos, and it would be forced to learn more general patterns rather than pixel-for-pixel -pixel copies. So, if I were to improve the model, the first thing I'd do is double my dataset size a few times. There are probably a million other improvements I could add, but for now, I'm satisfied with these results. For the moment, the model is not publicly available, though I may change that in the future. But if you want to see more generated thumbnails, I'll be posting them on my Twitter and Discord. Okay, so Diffusion works really well. Now we have to answer the question, why does Diffusion work so much better than GANs? Well, first off, I'd say this project has not been a fair comparison. The GAN implementation I borrowed was much older than the diffusion model and is missing out on some major upgrades like attention and residual connections. Again, you can get GANs to perform very well if you put in the work. But researchers have done a much more fair comparison and found that diffusion methods really do outperform GANs in a number of metrics. There are many reasons for this, and we only really understand a few, like the fact that GANs don't have a clear loss function. With Diffusion, the goal of both the program and the programmer is to make this number, loss, go down. With GANs, there's no reliable way to interpret the loss. You can fix this by using something fancy called a Wasserstein GAN, but this is not the only problem. 
Like I mentioned before, GANs are a balancing act. You have to split computational resources between the generator and discriminator, and when doing this, you have to make sure they are properly balanced in scale and architecture. Because the game is adversarial, a weakness in one will be endlessly exploited by the other. This is inherently unstable, and makes them very hard to train and scale if that balance is not perfect. Diffusion, despite all of the mathematical details, is much more straightforward. There is one network, with one well-defined loss function. It's built with a very direct goal of replicating the distribution of your dataset. It does so with a strong mathematical basis in information theory. In my experience, it is more stable, more scalable, and more reliable. As a result, the technologies that were previously based on GANs or other methods can be upgraded by moving to diffusion. Text-to-image models have historically been built with GANs, but the impressive Dolly 2 and Imagine were built with diffusion. Deepfakes are also based on GANs, and I think we should expect them to get much better very soon. Now, AI is a fast-moving field, and this video could be outdated in a week. Already, another method called autoregression may have beat both diffusion and GANs. The arms race is ever-escalating. To be sure, people are still using GANs to do interesting and valuable things, and I hope they stay competitive in the field. But maybe not. Sometimes beautiful technologies become obsolete, and maybe GANs themselves will, one day, go extinct. Thanks for watching everyone. This video was a ton of fun to make, but it did cost me an enormous amount of time and energy and indeed money, so I've decided to open a Patreon if you want to help support my channel and other projects. This would help me out a lot, and there are some benefits for patrons like Discord roles and bonus content that didn't make it into my videos. Rest assured, the Life Engine will remain completely free and open source, and you should only donate if you feel comfortable. Just watching my videos is enough. Until next time.